when the great powers of Europe charted the known world in the 15th century, this land did not exist. Peru and the enormous land mass of South America were marked terra incognita on the maps, land unknown. But in the peaks and folds of the Andes Mountains, a people were coming to power. They worshipped a creator god, as well as the sun, moon and stars. In a single century, they would conquer and rule an empire equal to that of Rome. The dramatic rise and fall of their culture would change forever the course of American and European history. They were known by the name of their all-powerful divine king, Son of the Sun, the Inca. According to legend, the Inca Pachacuti plunged a golden rod into the earth to mark the center of power. They call this place Cusco, the navel of the world. Over 3,000 metres above sea level, Cusco is the highest capital and the oldest continuously inhabited city in South America. Inca Pachacuti planned Cusco in a grid pattern, diverting two rivers into channels to refresh his city and irrigate the terraced hillsides. But the Inca genius was for stone. Without the wheel or horse, using ramps and rollers, they dragged, cut, and fitted the enormous stones that underpin Cusco to this day. Today, we can still walk the streets of ancient Cusco, marveling at the architecture and artistry of the Inca masons. Colonial buildings, like the convento, rest on the shoulders of Inca walls. When an earthquake toppled the superstructures in 1956, these great stones held firm. The Coricancha, the Corral of Gold, was the most important temple in the empire. Today it forms the base of the colonial church of Santo Domingo. Dedicated to Viracocha, the creator god, and Inti, the sun god, it was also a prison for the gods of Inca enemies, their icons housed here in homage and as hostages. Coricancha was also a treasure house that beggared belief. More than 700 sheets of pure gold covered the carved granite walls. The courtyard was filled with life-size sculptures of animals and a field of corn, all fashioned from gold. Even the floors were paved with solid gold. And here in the Inca Holy of Holies, a massive golden image of the sun encrusted with emeralds, reflected the glory of the sun god. Uh 
Nakata o hayos pa. Koksara tawin jo ayo. Korikancha was also a center of religious ritual. Koksara tawin jo ayo. Inca priests, robed to resemble the gods, offered the fruits of the earth and chiche beer in honor of the gods, who, according to Inca myth, created the first Inca people from maize. Cusco itself was designed in the shape of a great stone puma, a sacred animal of the Inca. These zigzag walls of the 15th century Sacsayhuaman fortress are the teeth of the puma, still snarling defiance from the Inca stronghold. With the capital consolidated, the Inca were ready for empire. In 1438, Pachacuti and his Inca armies swept out along the four roads that radiated out from Cusco to the Taiwan Tinsuyu, the four quarters of the world. Napoleon said, an army marches on its stomach. Way stations dotted the road at regular intervals, supplying the warriors. Chasky runners relayed messages to and from Cusco, covering up to 240 kilometers a day. Herds of llamas carried provisions. Llamas had the added advantage of being edible as well as agile. As the empire expanded, tribute and treasure flowed back the four roads to Cusco, creating enormous wealth for the emperor, his family, and nobles. Gold, the sweat of the sun, and silver, the tears of the moon, they would fashion into sacred art and build cities, roads, and bridges in the most precipitous places on earth. Sons of conquered chieftains also came to Cusco to learn the Inca ways and guarantee the loyalty of their tribes. But who built the massive infrastructure that underpinned the Inca Empire? Like the Egyptians, the Incas levied muti, a labor tax. Twelve million people extended and maintained over 10,000 miles of road, farmed the land and fought to subdue their enemies. In return, the state gave them food and chicha beer, even old age pensions and disability benefits. As the Romans did, the Incas conquered and assimilated. Those who were loyal remained on the land. Those who resisted were removed and replaced. Pizac, the city of towers, broods on the height, one of the stone cities guarding strategic parts of the empire. Like all Inca cities, it is built in the shape of a creature sacred to the Inca. Pizac means partridge. Pizak was ruled by a Kalish, a governor who ensured a portion of all produce went to the Inca. Fresh onions, small corn, fruit and potatoes flavor the air of the market square. Little has changed from the era of Pachacuti. Buyers and sellers wear vivid colors and barter as their ancestors did.
terraced fields ripple down the slopes all around because agriculture was and still is the lifeblood of Pisac. The nearby amphitheatre at More was more than an agricultural laboratory. The crops grown here symbolised the generosity of the gods and the ever-renewing relationship between the Inca and their deities. And the entire empire was tallied and taxed with this. The quipu is a length of coloured string knotted at specific intervals according to the decimal system. The Incas had no writing as we know it. With coloured strings, they administered the largest empire in the known world. But the string quickly stretched to breaking point. The lifestyle of the royals heaped taxes on the lowly. And when the reigning Inca, Huayna Capac, died, the empire split in a bloody civil war. Bodies hung from trees and strange rumours abounded. Oracles warned of bearded invaders. Chasqui ran to Cusco with news of a house floating on the sea, crowded with bearded men. At that critical point, the Spaniards waded ashore. How could 200 conquistadores and a handful of priests topple an empire? Give me a lever and a firm place to stand, Archimedes the Greek said, and I will shift the world. The keystone of the empire was the powerful Inca Atahualpa, and the conquistador Francisco Pizarro had a lever, a daring plan that would shift the history of the world. Cajamarca nestles in the foothills of the Andes, almost 2,700 metres above sea level. For the Cajamarca, a pre-Incan people, it was a sacred place, a city of the dead. The cliffs are carved into crypts, simple niches and corridors, like the catacombs of Rome. Here lie the ancestors of the Cajamarca, a people conquered by the Inca on their path to power. The Spaniards named them Las Ventanillas, the little windows. In 1532, the souls of the Cajamarca ancestors witnessed the fateful collision between Europe and South America. Atahualpa came in peace to meet Pizarro in the Plaza de Armas. Suddenly, armed horsemen burst from high doorways. Muskets boomed, the people panicked and fled. Atahualpa was toppled from his throne and the sun fell to earth. divine master of 12 million subjects, was confined here in El Cuarto de la Rescate. His ransom? This room filled with gold to a height he could reach, and two other rooms with silver. In today's money, it would amount to more than $250 million. And when the rooms were filled with the sweat of the sun and the tears of the moon, as the Incas called gold and silver, Pizarro had Atahualpa strangled. The glory of Inca gold and silver artifacts was melted into ingots and shipped to Spain.
Some of it found its way here to glorify the god of the conquerors. Symbolizing the superiority of the new god, gold clothes the Christian altar of the Baroque cathedral that stands in the Plaza de Armas, a monument to the end of an empire. When Pizarro took Cusco, the capital, the Inca people turned their faces to the mountains. They would make their last stand where their gods resided, in the sky. The sacred valley is a place of mystery. Its terraced fields, fingerprints of the sun god. Oyente Tambo clings to a mountain spur 2,800 meters above sea level. In the Quechua language, it means a place of rest. According to legend, the internal organs of mummified Inca were brought here for burial. The Inca genius for stone is everywhere, from the steep staircase to the terraced fields. And at the heart of Oyente Tambo, the Temple of the Sun. The cut stone blocks are set without mortar. They are an architectural wonder, only matched by the engineering ability that brought them from a quarry eight kilometers away on the other side of the river. But Oyente Tambo is incomplete. This typical trapezoidal doorway in the Temple of the Sun is not ruined, but unfinished. Whoever built these walls was interrupted. <coughs> The Spaniards were coming. It took just 50 horsemen to storm the heights, and Oriente Tambo fell. Where did the Inca go? There is a mysterious motif carved in the stones of Oriente Tambo the staircase. Is it a reminder of the highest places, the holiest places of the Inca gods, where offerings could be given and deliverance granted? We must climb this symbolic staircase to find what the Spaniards never found, the glorious lost city in the sky. The dense cloud forests of the High Andes hid the last Inca, Manco Capac, for a time. By 1570, the Spaniards had stripped the Inca of language, land, and worship of their gods, everything that made them unique. But they missed something. Machu Picchu lies cradled between two peaks high in the Andes Mountains. Guarded on three sides by a gorge that drops 800 meters to the Urubamba River. The complex spreads over 13 square kilometers and includes more than 200 buildings. Pablo Neruda, the South American poet, called it tall stepped city of stone. Hiram Bingham, the North American historian who found it in 1911 said it was like an unbelievable dream. It 
was the brainchild of Pachacuti, a country palace for the Inca, built on one of the most inaccessible sites on Earth. Brilliantly adapted to the natural landscape, it is an enduring monument to the architectural and engineering ability of the Inca. There was no shortage of stone to be quarried and run by ramp and roller to the site. Where do they find water? They found a natural mountain spring, channeling water to the agricultural terraces of Machu Picchu, bringing it tumbling down within the city to feed 16 fountains. Who lived here? It was a city divided. The rough cut stone houses of the peasants still stand within sight of the grander buildings of the powerful. But Machu Picchu was also a religious center. The temple of the condor uses the natural rock formation to portray the master of the mountain skies, a bird sacred to the Inca. At the top of the complex of sacred buildings, a granite monolith, the Intihuatana, the place where the sun is kept prisoner. Machu Picchu's most famous monument suggests a strong link between the Inca worship of the heavenly bodies and astronomy. Using the angles of this pillar, astronomers could predict the solstices and claim control over the seasons. There were many Inti Huatana throughout Peru. The Spaniards smashed them to wipe out worship of the sun, all except this one at the heart of Machu Picchu. Even today, Machu Picchu is still a place of mystery, the most well-known of the Inca sites, and yet the one we know least about. What we do know is that after just 50 years in use, it was deserted and the jungle grew back to reclaim and conceal the last great citadel of the Inca Empire. And what of the gods? Viracocha, Inti, and the gods of the heavens, rocks, springs, valleys and high places disappeared with the Inca Empire to be remembered in art and architecture as the lost gods. Mama. 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 Mama.